we got to get to Stormy. Have to. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. You know, last night we had scheduled Gresham here for a conversation about the March Madness and what's going on with, you know, the Patriot deals and the Red Sox and everything else that we tried to cover. But, you know, gnawing at both him and me was the notion that we're letting a day pass without reflecting on Stormy Daniels. My goodness, it's 22 million people on 60 Minutes or watching 60 Minutes. And what's got to go up the president's wazoo sideways is that it's the highest rated show in a decade, better than the Obamas and better than him. That's, uh, that's not good uh, for the morning Twitter psyche of Donald Trump. And interestingly, our good president has not been on Twitter regarding this, which is just amazing to me. And the question that I keep asking is, if the polls suggest, and if the pulse of the, uh, not only the base, but the U.S. in general, is that people know him and really don't care about his exploits, then why can't he just admit that he's been involved in these situations with these women? What else is hanging over his head? I'm guessing that my expert sociologist and international affairs professor from Brown University, Michael Kennedy, will have a thought or two on that coming up momentarily. So with no further ado, here's uh, the latest from CBS on the flap. As a matter of fact, the exact sentence used was, they can make your life hell in many different ways. They being? I'm not exactly sure who they were. I believe it to be Michael Cohen. Mr. Michael Cohen. For the last decade, attorney Michael Cohen has been part of the president's inner circle, providing legal counsel and serving as a fixer, a jack of all trades who seemingly can make unpleasant situations go away. We will do what it's necessary to protect him and the, and the office of the presidency. He has a reputation for using aggressive tactics. In 2015, Cohen allegedly threatened a Daily Beast reporter. The publication was working on a story surrounding Ivana Trump's rape allegation against her then husband, which she has since recanted. You write a story that has Mr. Trump's name in it with the word rape, and I'm going to mess your life up, Cohen reportedly said. Michael Cohen has zero credibility. Stormy Daniels attorney Michael Avenatti says Cohen has a history of using thuggish behavior and intimidation to protect his boss. David Schwartz, an attorney for Cohen, maintains his client did nothing wrong. Mr. Cohen paid the $130,000, but the reason is to protect business, protect reputation, and to protect family. But the timing of the payment, 11 days before the election, raises red flags as a possible violation of federal campaign law. Kim Whaley is a former federal prosecutor. Mr. Cohen is getting himself in deeper legal problems that could make him more vulnerable in the Mueller investigation. I don't think that necessarily benefits uh, others that are potentially the topic of that investigation, including the president of the United States himself. I, I love the New York lawyer for the New York lawyer. That's uh, it's classic. Professor Kennedy, if you've seen the program before, and he's been kind to join us multiple times over the course of the last few years. He's already got a he's already got a little thought about the president or a lot of thoughts about the president. I, I, I just can't imagine well how much popcorn did you eat and how much did you enjoy the Stormy Daniels interview? I think I had a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Good to see Thank you. you. All you. right. Your gut is <sighs> my gut is that Trump's nightmare begins with Stormy. And it begins with Stormy not because she's unusual, but her lawyer is unusual. Mm. And this isn't the first extramarital relationship. This isn't the first cover-up that Trump Hardly has Hardly a done. relationship, right? It's a one-nighter, if you believe her story. It's a one-night stand. Right. And a four-hour view of uh, the, the shark show well, that exactly. she got bored with. I mean, you yeah. know, relationships are not always made with sex. You can yes. also make them with sharks, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, but... I think in this circumstance, what is significant is that the lawyer, Michael Avenatti, has been able to turn this in, you know, way beyond a simple court case. And now it's actually a question of whether Michael, not Michael Avenatti, what's the... Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen 
is himself implicated in all sorts of crimes associated with the, uh, the elections because of this cover-up. So this yeah. is just a mess that keeps on getting messier. Well, FEC violations, I don't know many uh, Federal Election Commission violations that end up in jail time. Some do. Uh, I'd have to do a little research on how many have. Usually copious fines, slaps on wrist, $130,000 single event uh, infractions I'm sure are expensive uh, to, but the whale is pretty deep when it comes to Donald Trump. Except Donald Trump reportedly doesn't pay his bills nor pay anybody that doesn't right. even work for him. So it seems that Mr. Cohen has been saying that he's out $130,000 in a payment to Stormy Daniels out of the goodness of his heart and he's had to say it because he wasn't getting reimbursed and wasn't getting paid. I can't believe the guy did that with the expressed objective and the understanding he would never be paid by the president. I mean, I mean, so I, I, I keep on waiting to hear another lawyer say, yeah, this is normal legal behavior. No There's, one has. No one has. So this is obviously something well beyond the normal, but then we are accustomed to well beyond the normal when it comes to Trump. Oh, look, you have... Um, I'm no expert on Stormy, so thank you. Get that, but you have, but you have, listen, you don't buy the President's Act, and for the most part, I don't either. Uh, but we've had, I don't know, a half a dozen to a dozen shows, you and me, where you've kind of said, well, this is, this is going to be it. Like, this, this is, this is going to, this is going to be it. So are you telling me that this is going to be it? No, no, when not Stormy, not Stormy. So... I tweeted this morning that I think if I could get inside Trump's head and imagine what his nightmares look like, Stormy's one word in that, uh, Mueller is a bigger word in that, Putin is another word in that, you know, even Bolton is swimming around in that maelstrom, and of course the last one is Gonzalez in that, and that is causing a nightmare of ungodly proportions. Okay. What do we do with that? So, so this is what I was thinking about on the way over. Hmm. That we have a jigsaw puzzle without any edges. And we are not the only ones, we in the American public, we in the world public, are not the only ones trying to fit all these pieces together. We're trying to think about how Trump is also fitting these pieces together because, you know, for instance, even if you were to think about, as some people were suggesting, the reason he appoints Bolton is not just because he doesn't have anyone left to appoint, but also because Bolton is someone who takes up a lot of airspace. But the relationship between Bolton and Stormy is unclear. The relationship between Bolton and Putin is actually more intriguing. Well, why would you think there is any relationship between Bolton and Stormy, other than wag the dog, uh, other than distraction? Distraction is the only thing. There's no relationship I can imagine, except for the fact, well, this, that what is happening is that the celebrity adult film star is emasculating Trump in his own celebrity game. So he needs to surround himself with even more pseudo masculine actors well, it's like John Bolton. Well, okay, we'll get to the, we'll get to foreign policy and Bolton and all of that. And if you're suggesting motive is some of this turbulence, I, I'm not going to disagree with you because I've often thought that nothing is as it appears, right. Uh, right? Nothing is as it appears. But we have we have headlines like you know Huffington Post Trump can't find a lawyer, um, literally, right now. And he tweets about how more or less I'm, I'm paraphrasing this weekend he tweeted about how you know money grubbing they are and. And how they're all in it for just you know hourly hours you know hours build and and their own self gratification. Clearly, he's he was frustrated over the idea that he really can't assemble the team that he wants to assemble here, which is I'm sure problematic because Cohen. Back to your original point about FEC violations, Cohen now is susceptible to a lot of leverage from Bob Mueller. That's that's what I think Absolutely. is problematic because he he wants to talk to Cohen at length about transactional issues involving Donald Trump pre-election anyway yes yes isn't that where really the you know the stormy thing he gets all tied up in that situation right. i think Mueller is going and, and when Mueller is known if he hasn't already to extend his interest to this stormy thing because of cohen's fec stuff that's when the president's lid is going to flip yeah 
Well, I think that's it. I mean, because I everyone's projecting when is the president going to pop Bob Mueller? You know, what's he got to do to get through? You know, the 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 acting attorney general to be able to get. You know, what's he going to do? What's his own Saturday Night Massacre version look like, and when is it coming? It could be something like that. I don't know. If Mueller extends his interest to that to that particular category of conversation, I think it's going to go batty for Donald Trump. So this is uh, we talked about Trump's nightmare. This is my nightmare. You know, he brings in Bolton, with whom he disagreed profoundly if you take the Iraq war, literally. You know, Bolton was one of the principal advocates. Right. Trump claimed to have been opposed to it. Right. Now Jimmy Carter and all sorts of other folks are talking about how dangerous it is to have Bolton in this position. And when you push out McMaster, who was someone who would talk back to power, I'm worried that what Trump is angling toward is some kind of extraordinary intervention in the world that will get him out of the legal troubles that he has here right, well, because I, we can't we can't swallow it all. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about how that might look. Stay with us. In closing, I'd like to ask that each of you undertake to ensure one act of kindness each day towards another person. This can be a very mean-spirited town. He actually got a nervous chuckle from his from the, the staff that he was departing when Secretary Tillerson made that. I, I was just saying to Michael during the break, every time he comes here, and he hasn't, it's been a couple of months, and there's so much stuff that happens between your visits, it's hard to catch up. And you sit here trying to, you, you've got this, this You've got this way about you where you're always trying to figure out how it all fits together. Why do you do that to yourself? Why do you why 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 do you begin with a premise that everything fits together when it seems to me that disruption Trump style is random? I think it's a disciplinary disposition. I mean, sociologists, your part? sociologists have to put things together, even if it's from the point of view of particular agents. So I am actually trying to get, scary as it is, inside Trump's head a little bit in order to figure out how he's putting it together because there's so many things swirling at once. I worry, given his sort of impulsive nature, that some bad stuff could be coming down. But that's what we have, we've been saying that from the beginning. And the market, has, although it's had a couple of skids based on his tariff behavior, seems to want the market and the economy seem to be on such a good stead right now that it just keeps pushing back against the disruptive randomness of the president. So that's okay. We have a North Korean meeting and I've had multiple experts here to talk about that, what may be coming up in May. Most people said, well, you know what, it's not what we ought to do, but maybe it's something we ought to try. Now Bolton being the hawkish flavor into that right. maybe creates a situation that's a little bit different. but. I, I, I think it's interesting. The way your wheels turn and, and the way you format process seems to be. I've stopped thinking about what he's thinking about. I think he just does what he does when he does it, and it, it, and it disruption is the actual currency. I agree. But my point is, is when I'm trying to get inside that scary head, I'm not trying to get into that scary head as it has always existed, because it never exists in the same state. At, from one point in time to the next. But what is happening is that he is maneuvering constantly, throwing things up constantly with what aim? The aim is to survive. That's all it is. I, and you know, he, his survival, not our survival, and that's what scares me. I, I agree. I, I think, the, I, I think his, his objective is always so, so, so um, self-centric in such an amplified and extraordinary way that that's why we can't we, we, we just can't believe half the stuff but I don't even I don't even think it's survival I, 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 at the end of the of the process the overuse phrase is the end of the day right the end of the process he's a pardon machine I don't think there's anything criminal that he inevitably thinks he has to or wants to worry about uh, and if he got thrown out, the network that he would build would would be there to respond to everything that would be happening in the White House. I just, I, I don't think he's a guy that has anything to fear. 
I, he, I, I don't think survival. This is really fascinating. This is you're this making is me think. This I don't. Th I don't think survival is an objective. We Dead air on television is very profound, by the way. <sighs> it is. I, mean, I don't. I don't think survival is an objective. All right. Let I me, think he thinks he's got an answer for everything. If this happens, I'll do this. If this happens, I'll do this. If this happens, I'll do this. I'll just keep. I'm just going to do what I want to do until I'm tired of doing it. Right. And so that's why, A, we have to be able to think about what his motive is so that we can not just think about him. Because we need to think about what the rest of the nation's actions must be in order to preserve democracy and the republic. Because he will go so far as to throw the rule of law under the bus. The one thing I'm not clear about is whether he will throw his family under the bus. And with all of the investigations now around Jared Kushner and the ways in which his quest for money to preserve 666 Fifth Avenue is going to ultimately land Kushner in legal trouble. And of course, who is the most precious relationship that Trump has in the world? His daughter. His daughter. Weirdly. I mean, so, I have a daughter. The way he speaks about his daughter is... Right. Well, let's not go there. But it's just weird. It's like a reverse electric complex. It's weird. But what we do need to think about is what is he willing to do to the nation in order to preserve Trump? Because I can't believe that survival in some form is not his ambition. I just don't know what the end game that what what could happen that would be labeled he didn't survive it. Well, I've been talking about impeachment. I don't think that bothers yeah. him in the least. No, no, no. Well, or if it doesn't bother him, be let's go ahead and do it. Well, you know? he, right, he wouldn't be angling for meetings with Mueller, spitting out lawyers left and right here who are saying, you're crazy. It's a perjury trap. If he didn't care. I think if he were impeached... And on trial in the Senate, he'd be waking up every day with a skip in his step. Like, wow, this is crazy. You're driving me towards psychoanalysis, you know. Well, that's my point. I don't think he. I don't there. think he sees a survival. That this. this mm -hmm. I think we we've got. In the same way that we deal with terrorism. There, are, we've been having trouble dealing with terrorism because those people don't have the same survival end game. They think they, you know, they think moving on to the next world is seventy virgins and a, and, a, and and whatever. No. I don't think the president worries about this stuff. In the end, I won't go to the terrorist motivation, but I will go to. Trump. But I'm just, it, and, they're, and they're not linked by any. I'm yeah, not yeah. linking it. I'm just so, saying so, that we've had a hard time understanding that paradigm because what they consider survival does, does is not normal in our mindset. So this is even a greater nightmare. Is the theme of the show. Here's the greatest nightmare. Oh, hold what? on. There's a greatest nightmare. you got to wait for it. Stay with us. All right. What is the, the, the greatest nightmare? So you led me to reformulate everything. I wonder if it would be productive to think about Trump's motivation as a kind of death wish. And a kind of death wish in three senses. On the one hand, he wants to go down kind of like uh, Yosemite Sam with guns blazing. It's more appropriate to Bolton, but you know, it's with Bolton and Trump together, you have Yosemite Sam uh, reckless. And that's why he's willing to talk to Mueller, because he'll go down in flames with Mueller. Death wish number one. Death wish number two for the GOP. Still angry that the GOP... Never embraced him at the beginning. And... Right? And so, and of course, you know, my, you know, my own hometown, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, seeing the one moderate Republican or one of the few moderate Republicans actually leading, taking off. The GOP is done. And then the third thing, which is his death wish... Which I, am, well, which I am afraid of, frankly, 
is that he is so reckless with his approach to international diplomacy that he can't think three steps down the road. And with Bolton there, he may be taking us into hellfire. That's the third death wish. So reconstructing all of this around death wish makes more sense of Trump than I ever realized. You just came up with all that because I told you he's not, he's not, he, because I think he's not worried about anything. He's not worried about survival, so therefore what is he weak seeking? Death wish. Yeah, death wish is a, death wish is a really, really tough term. But, you know, I, this is just two guys brainstorming here at this point because it just, it is really yeah. hard to compute. I, I, I just think that, that, uh, that, There are some people on the planet that just worry about spelling the name right. And I don't think it's an easy name to spell. I don't think it's, I don't think it's much deeper than that. Spell the name right. Which I don't know if he's looking to scorch the earth. I wouldn't say he's looking to. But he, I'm not assured that he seeks to avert it. Right, right. And because, so, it, because all the way, the, the, as long as the name was spelled right. So what we need to do, therefore, is to think about all these agents around him and wonder if somehow they can contain his death wish to enable our own survival. Uh, we just have to have faith that they can. You know, Mattis is not uh, a spring chicken. Yeah. You know, worry about him. And Bolton, you would hope, will strap it down and, and take it down a notch, knowing that he's no longer in a, in a place where he's urging action. He is action. That's an act of faith right there. I would hope so. So we have to worry I about think the Bolton, people. I think Bolton's a smart guy, and I think he's a patriot. But he's also aggressive. Very. And dangerous for that reason. He's already pushing Iran, Russia, and China to think about an alternative alliance beyond the kind of agreement that we have reached internationally. Yeah. That's dangerous. Um, right? With all these folks we just kicked out of the country, Russia-wise, Russia saying, you know, big mistake, big mistake. What do you think? I don't know. I, I'm having trouble keeping score so, right now. We well, got, we this is just seconds, yeah. But, this yeah. is just going to be a tit for tat, uh, Russia v. USA and the West. But what is different right now is that we have finally created a re response to Russian incursion in the UK that gives hope that there might be a solidarity around a, a global order that's not based on uh, the violation of international norms. And what Russia may do in response to Trump actually being aggressive towards them that he might be worried about at the end of the day, I think as long as they spell his name right, too. They have too much dirt on him, no doubt. Well, we'll see. Deutsche Bank, that's my last word, Deutsche Bank. But now I gotta go back, last word, when I come back. Well, that got a little deep. Uh, I really do think it's about spelling the name right. We'll see uh, as it goes. The name will be spelled right, one way or the other. See you on the radio at 3 on WPRO, and thanks for watching. Good night.